Chapter One of the Insect Folk. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Insect Folk by Margaret Warner Morley. Chapter One: Our Pretty Dragonflies. Come, children, come with me. Come to a pond I know of. See how the water shines in the sun. Over there is an old log lying on the edge of the pond. It is covered with green moss, and a green frog is sitting on one end of it. Let us go and sit on the other end. Goop, he says, and plump, he has jumped into the water. That is too bad, frog. We did not mean to disturb you. How pretty it is here. See the pickerel weed growing out in the water with its arrow-shaped leaves and its spikes of purple flowers? See down in the water are little fish, and very likely pollywogs are there too, and lots of queer little things. But who is this darting over the pond? Ah, we know you. You are our queer little, dear little old dragonfly. Look, children, see the dragonflies darting about like flashes of light in every direction? They are having such a good time. Whiz! One flashed right past Molly's ear. Pretty people, I wish one of you would come and sit by us a little while, so we could get a good look at you. What is that, Ned? You have found a large one lying on the ground? Sure enough, it is a beauty, too, with a green body and silver wings. Something seems to be wrong with it. It does not fly, nor try to get away. What a big one it is! My, my, what eyes! Don't crowd, Amy. Let little Nell see, too. What is that you say, Richard? It catches mosquitoes and gnats and flies and other insects while flying? Yes, and that is why it has such big eyes. We should need big eyes ourselves if we were to spend our time chasing mosquitoes. Two eyes you have, little dragonfly, like the rest of us, but your eyes are not like ours. No, indeed. Each of your big eyes is made up of a great many small eyes packed close together. Do you know, children, that some of the largest of the dragonflies have as many as twenty thousand facets, or small eyes, in each large eye? Think of it! Forty thousand eyes in one little dragonfly head! It ought to see well! These facets are six-sided, excepting those along the edge, which are rounded on the outside. You cannot see their real shape without a microscope. They are so small. But here is a picture of some facets, as they look under the microscope. Eyes like these, made up of many facets, we call compound eyes. All grown-up insects have compound eyes, though not many have as large ones as the dragonfly. Only insects that chase other insects, or that need to see in the dark, have very large eyes. See what a big mouth the dragonfly has. Its jaws do not show unless it opens its lower lip, which fits over its mouth like a mask. I should not care to have it bite my finger. It could not hurt very much, and its bite is not poisonous. Still, I shall handle it carefully. Some call the dragonfly a darning needle, and say it sews up people's ears when they lie in the grass. This is not true. It does not sew up anything. It has nothing to sew with. Why should it want to sew up people's ears anyway? It does nothing unpleasant but bite fingers, and it never goes out of its way to do that. If we let it alone, it always lets us alone. It is our good friend because it catches mosquitoes. For this reason it is sometimes called mosquito hawk. We should never kill a dragonfly. Sometimes it is called a spindle. I suppose because it is long and slender like a spindle. Down south, the colored people believe the dragonfly brings dead snakes to life, and they call it snake doctor. In some places it is called snake feeder. But it has nothing to do with snakes, dead or alive. The French have given it a pretty name, demoiselle, or damselfly. And that is quite deserved, for the dragonfly is a graceful little creature, as pretty as pretty can be. See, sticking out of the front of its head are two little feelers, or antennae, as we must call them. 
They are very short, but it does not need long ones. Insects smell with their feelers, you know, but our dragonflies see so well that they do not need to smell very well, I suppose. See how it can turn its head around? That is because it has a little short neck between its head and its body. Its eyes, its mouth, and its antennae belong to its head. Of course, our demoiselle can fly well. One need only to look at those wings to know that. To fly well is quite as necessary to one of its habits as to see well. What would be the use of seeing an insect if it could not fly fast enough to catch it? We all like your pretty wings, little dragonfly. They look like glass, and they shine so in the sun. How fast the wings can move! See that dragonfly skimming over the pond? Its wings making a whizzing sound as it darts about. Why does it zigzag so? Why doesn't it fly in a straight line? Yes, Molly, you are right. It goes zigzagging along after insects. It sees one it wants off at one side. Whiz! Around it turns after it. Shouldn't you like to fly like that, children? And yet we would not be willing to exchange our arms and legs for wings. We could not whittle a stick nor write a letter if we only had wings. In fact, we could not do most of the things we do now. I am glad I have my hands. We are glad, too, that the dragonflies have their pretty swift wings. They have four wings, all nearly the same size and shape, you see, and they are all stiff and shining. Some dragonflies, like this one we have picked up, always keep their wings spread out. But over there, standing on the end of that stick, is another kind. When it rests, its wings are folded together. What a pretty one it is! Do you see it? It is small, but so pretty. It is bright blue, and shines as though it has been polished. Sometimes birds catch these smaller dragonflies, though birds, as a rule, are not fond of any of them. They are so hard, and their wings are so stiff, I should think a bird might almost as well swallow nails. I am sure no bird could swallow one of the big ones, wings and all. But frogs can. A frog will try to swallow almost anything it can catch, and it watches for the dragonflies when they come to lay their eggs in the water. Suddenly it jumps out, and away goes poor dragonfly into that great wide frog mouth. Now look at the legs of the dragonfly. It has six. Every dragonfly has six legs. They are rather short and small for so large an insect, but that is because it does not need large, strong legs. You never saw a dragonfly dig a hole, or run, or even walk, did you? Their legs are not arranged for walking. All six of them are directed forwards as though they were reaching out after something. And so they are, reaching out after insects. Dragonfly catches his prey while he is flying, and he grasps the insects with his feet. He snatches one, and then what? Does he sit down somewhere and eat it? Not he. He is far too hungry for that. He continues his swift flight, and as he flies, he eats. As soon as he has finished one fly, or gnat, zip, he snatches another. He has an insatiable appetite, consuming hundreds of insects in the course of a day. Nor does he confine his attention to flies and gnats and mosquitoes and such small fry. He catches what he can. A large dragonfly will even gorge himself on one of the large-sized butterflies, and one has been seen calmly chewing away at an enormous wasp. No, indeed, Mabel, the dragonfly does not eat the wings of the butterfly. It eats only the soft body. Probably nothing eats a butterfly, wings and all. Birds and insects sometimes catch butterflies, and you often see the bright wings lying on the ground. The wings of the insects are not worth eating, and are almost always cast aside by the creatures that eat the insects. Besides catching insects with their legs, the dragonflies cling fast to things with them, but when they wish to move, they do not walk, they fly. Yes, indeed, Frank, you are right. Their legs are jointed. That is so they can move them easily and fold them up when they want to. 
they would find it as hard to get along without joints to their legs as we should. Wouldn't we be stiff if we had no joints? See the legs and wings are fastened to the middle part of their body, the thorax, we call it. All insects have the legs and wings attached to the thorax. The rest of the body is the abdomen. See how long it is? It is the long abdomen that gives the dragonfly its name of spindle, I suppose. The abdomen is jointed, and it can curl up. All grown-up insects have a head, a thorax, and a jointed abdomen. What are you looking at, Charlie? Something moving in the bottom of the pond? Let us get it out. Here, we will dip it out with this cup. What a lot of stuff! Sticks and mud and— What is that? Something alive, surely. Let us put some clean water in the cup and examine what we have found. My, my, what a queer little thing! What do you suppose it is? Ah, I know now, but I do not think you could ever, ever guess, not if you tried a week. It is a young dragonfly. It does not look much like its shiny-winged parents. It looks like, I don't know what, with a face like, well, when you look right in front of it, like a pug dog. Queer. Well, I should think so. What is that, Amy? Am I sure it is a dragonfly? Yes, there is no mistake. A dragonfly one day dropped an egg in the pond, and out of it hatched this. It will some day become a shiny-winged dragonfly and catch mosquitoes. We call it larva, and we will watch it a little while. Look and see if it has a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. Are the antennae on its head, and has it eyes? If you were to look at its eyes with a microscope, you would find that they are made of six-sided facets, like the eyes of the grown-up dragonfly. They are compound eyes, but they are not as large as the eyes of the grown-up dragonfly. How many legs has it? What are its legs fastened to? Yes, Nellie, thorax is right. Its six legs are fastened to its thorax. I am glad you remembered thorax. Has it a jointed abdomen, and has it wings? Look, did you see that? It opened its innocent-looking face all of a sudden, just darted it out into a long-handled spoon, with hooks at the end, and hooked up the little grub. Now it is holding the grub on the hooks in front of its mouth, and eating it as greedily as if it were half-starved. So that is why its face looks so queer. It is its long upper lip all folded up in front like a mask that makes it look like a pug dog. When it pleases, it darts out that lip, and any unlucky insect or snail may fall a prey to its greedy appetite. It is said that the larvae of some dragonflies even eat pollywogs and small fishes. Ned wants to know if larvae means the same as larva. Yes, it is the plural form of the word. When we speak of only one, we say larva. When we speak of more than one, instead of saying larvas, we say larvae. The dragonfly larvae are terrible gluttons, and hidden under the mask are strong jaws for chewing up their prey. Their legs are quite large and strong, too, for they crawl about the bottom of the pond or up the stalks of the plants. They do not move about very fast, but they do shoot out that underlip, very, very, very fast indeed. So good-bye to any little live thing in the pond that comes within reach of it. The dragonfly larvae do not all look alike. They are different in the different species of dragonflies, and, like the rest of us, they change as they grow older. Yes, May, you can keep the dragonfly larvae until they change into dragonflies. You must supply them with fresh water and with enough to eat, and you must put a net over the bowl or aquarium in which you keep them. Otherwise, as soon as they are able, they will fly away. How can they fly without wings? Oh, but they are going to have wings. You know they are young dragonflies in spite of their strange appearance. Be sure and feed them enough, or else they will eat each other, and that should be a pity. And be sure that there are some water plants for them to hide under and crawl upon. 
You can give them a little fresh fish or a tiny bit of very fresh meat, though they like best the living things they find in the bottom of the pond. When the dragonfly larva first hatches, it is very small, and its legs are rather long and spidery, but it eats and eats and eats. My, how it eats! And it grows and grows, and one day it finds its skin too tight. A tight skin must be rather uncomfortable, but the larva does not care much for its skin. It merely splits open down the back and pulls itself out. Perhaps you think it must be yet more uncomfortable to be without a skin. But it is not without a skin. It is covered by a new and soft one that soon hardens, and that is larger than the old one. It wriggles out of its old skin as though it were an old coat, and leaves it clinging to the weeds in the pond. Sometime you may find these cast-off dragonfly overcoats. After it has shed its skin, the dragonfly continues to grow. It keeps on growing until it has outgrown its new skin. Then what do you think it does? Yes, Charlie, that is right. It sheds this skin, too. When it sheds its skin, we say it molts. It molts several times, and at last little short wings appear. At first it has no wings at all, you know. Amy wonders how the larva breathes under water. Ah, Master Ned, you are laughing too soon. You think insects do not have to breathe, but you are very much mistaken, sir. Insects do have to breathe. They would die if they could get no air to breathe. Some of the dragonfly larvae have an odd arrangement for breathing under water. They have a sort of syringe in the end of the body, and there are breathing pores, or gills, in the syringe. The water goes in and out of this syringe, and the larva breathes as the fish does by means of its gills. Yes, May, its gills are its syringe, which seems very odd. You see, the dragonfly larva breathes at its tail end instead of its head end. Molly thinks it is an upside-down, inside-out sort of a creature anyway, but it knows what it is about. Ned wants to know how it can get any air to breathe when it lives under water. The truth is, there is always air mixed in with water, and it is this air that the larva breathes when the water goes in and out of the syringe. It uses the syringe for another purpose, too. When it pleases, it can shoot out the water with great force, and thus propel itself quite a distance. By means of the syringe, it can leap through the water faster than it can move by its slow-going legs. Molly wants to know if we can see the syringe. No, it is inside the body. But there is a kind of dragonfly that has a pair of gills outside, at the end of the abdomen, instead of the syringe inside. The best I can do is to show you a picture of one. Some day we may find it in the pond. These two feather-like parts at the tail end are gills. Yes, John, it can propel itself through the water by rowing, as it were, with these gills. There are some species of dragonfly larvae that swim by moving the tip of the abdomen from side to side, as a fish moves its body when it swims. But now let us return to our funny larva that lives at the bottom of the pond. It stays down there, eating and growing and molting, for nine or ten months, or even longer. Then something very wonderful happens. It suddenly feels a great desire to get up to the top of the pond. It climbs up a weed or a stick until it is clear out of the water. Then its skin splits down the back for the last time, and out there pulls itself, not a larva, but a weak-looking dragonfly, with soft and flabby little wings. Now is its hour of danger, and now is the time for such birds as like the taste of young dragonflies to help themselves. Cat-birds seem to have a special fondness for these helpless insects, and have been known to eat them before the flabby little wings have grown stiff. If the birds do not find the newly emerged dragonfly, it remains motionless an hour or so, but it does not remain unchanged. Its wings stretch out and harden. Bright, metallic colors begin to play over them and over its body, and all at once, off it darts, away and away, glittering in the sunshine, a swift, beautiful-winged creature. 
Towards the end of summer, you will often see dragonflies darting about in every direction. They seem to come in swarms, and I think they usually come where there are ponds or marshes, for in such places there are many gnats and mosquitoes. Molly wants to know why it would not be a good plan for people who live where there are many mosquitoes to raise dragonflies. That is a very sensible idea, Molly, and it has been tried. Yes, indeed, some men once collected dragonfly larvae, and took care of them until they changed into dragonflies. Then what do you think happened? As soon as they got their wings, away went those dragonflies, away and away, without stopping to catch a single mosquito for the men who had taken the trouble to raise them. The dragonflies will not stay at home. They fly so fast and so far, there is no use raising them. They are among the swiftest and strongest of insects. How do the larvae get in the ponds? Frank is asking. I will tell you what I know about it. The winged dragonflies mate, and the female then drops her eggs in the water, or lays them on twigs in the water, where they hatch out into larvae. The dragonflies have to be very careful when they go close to the water to lay their eggs. You all know why. Yes, it is because the frogs are on the watch to catch them. The mother dragonfly knows the larvae have to live in the water, and so she takes pains to put the eggs there. Sometimes she even crawls down under the water on stems of plants to lay her eggs. Isn't she a wise little mother? There are a good many species of dragonflies. Some are large, and some are small. Some are bright, and some are dull. There are black ones and bright blue ones, or green ones with blue eyes. Some are marked with red and yellow. They are a very gay family. The dragonfly family is also a very old one. Indeed, it is one of the oldest families on earth. Long before there were bees or butterflies or dogs or horses or human beings, there were dragonflies. Don't you suppose that may be why the dragonfly is such a strange-looking insect? It does not look like other insects. It is very old-fashioned, like the pine trees. Pine trees, too, belong to a very old plant family that lived long ago, before there were oaks or maples, or other trees that shed their leaves. Now we must go home. Good-bye, green frog. You may come back to your log now. Good-bye, pretty dragonfly people. We shall never forget you. Good-bye, pleasant pond and moss-grown log. We hope to see you often again. End of chapter 1